Hello and welcome to the final Spark AR tutorial video of 2020. Yes, we are f finally close to the end of 2020, so I decided to make a filter that kind of half celebrates the end of one year and the start of another. And in this video, we'll be looking at how to create the split filter, where basically half of the screen shows one lot of content, the other half shows another, and when the user goes between one side and another, the content changes. I'm just going to enable some layers just to show you what I mean. So let me just uh, enable these two little layers here. There we go. So we have this evil 2020 side. Let me just rotate the screen just so you can see a bit easier. There we go. So we have our evil 2020 side over on our right side. I mean, it's left to you, but it's, it'll make sense in a minute why I've called it the right side. And over on our left, or is technically the right side, I suppose, is our new year, the 2021. Now, what's actually happening here is we have two sets of layers or nestled content that can change between, depending on which side the user is kind of leaning on. Now, this effect is quite simple to achieve, but it is a little bit system heavy. So just bear that in mind uh, before you kind of go too elaborate. As you can see, I've done something that's very rudimentary uh, and something that I realistically would want to spend a lot more time on than I actually have been able to the last few days because we've just had Christmas. So I'm going to show you how this filter was created. Some of the little challenges that we uh, kind of can run into. Let me just tuck this up for a second. There we go. And we'll go through this sort of step by step and sort of look at what you can do with this kind of technique. So let us begin. OK, so like usual, we're going to start off with a fresh project. So in this case, I've just created a new face tracker template. So all we should have in our scene is our face tracker object like so. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to need to essentially tell Spark AR to capture two different sides. So in my case, left or right. This could also be top or bottom or diagonal cut, etc., of our scene and show only the layers um, sort of controlled or displayed within one, one side on one side of our screen and vice versa on the other. So we basically need the screen capture to essentially capture the entire scene, but then only show certain layers or certain objects depending on the position that is um, kind of being controlled by our alpha properties in this case. This will make more sense as we go for it anyway. OK, so I'm just going to add a null object, and I'm going to call this null object, rename this, uh, right side. Like I said, this could also be top, bottom, left, right, horizontal cut, etc. And I'm just going to drag my face tracker to be a child of this right side null object. So anything that we nestle within this right side null object will be controlled by this null and will be displayed in that sort of quadrant that we decide to set it as. So I'm just going to create a face mesh onto this. Just again, this could be a plane. I didn't know it before, or this could be, in fact, actually, no, we'll just go back with plane because a plane will be a bit more um, easy to uh, see what's going on with. So there we have our kind of little checkerboard plane. I'm just going to create a new material. I'm just going to color this material to be red. And then I'm going to duplicate my null object. So everything that's controlled, uh, nestled within this will be duplicated. And I'm going to call, rename this duplicate left side. So this could be bottom side or different quadrant name if you wanted to give it such. And I'm just going to give my plane another new material. And this new material for the second plane, I'm going to just make blue. So what we should have is we should have two planes sort of overlapping each other. Let me just pause this so you can see. So we've got these two planes, both in exactly the same position as each other, uh, on top of each other and sort of masking, like so. 
And what we need to do is we need to tell Spark AR to only show everything that's controlled within this left side on the left side and everything that's on the right side on the right side. So the way we do that is we create a alpha material or alpha texture. So if you don't know what an alpha texture is, I would definitely encourage looking at some other tutorials we've done on where we've used alpha textures before. But essentially what an alpha texture is, is using the values of white to say this is what we want to keep and transparent background as an element we want to remove to create occlusion or a mask essentially. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to what we're trying to do is we're trying to basically have one side of our screen sort of masked and only showing, showing one quadrant and likewise on the other. So we're going to have our screen essentially having two rectangles essentially that split our screen equally. One showing everything that's on our right side, null, and everything that's showing, and the other one showing everything that's on our left side, null. Okay, so I'm just going to go now to my patch editor. get that open in advance and I'm just going to now import my left and right split images. So to do that I just went into Photoshop, created a little square image. Uh, again it doesn't have to be, it doesn't matter about the size of this, as long as we split it sort of into the sort of equal or if you wanted something to be three quarters or third or whatever, as long as you kind of split it equally depending on how many quadrants you want to have in your effect. And we're going to save that as a PNG and we're just going to have half of it white on one save and the other one going to be the same but on the opposite side. So we're going to have a left side image and a right side image and we're just going to import those into our project like so. So we should now have these two textures left and right or this could be top or bottom or however you decided to sort of split up your filter or effect. And then I'm going to go over to device and I'm going to need to use the render pass value. And what a render pass is, is it's basically like a screenshot of everything that's on the screen at that point in time. And we're going to use that to capture our scene and then mask off certain elements or certain objects. So I'm going to create a new default pipeline. And this should, if I show a map just to get me there quicker, create this little patch sequence for us. What we have is our device, this is our final screen, at, uh, screen output. We have a scene render pass which is our snapshot, our camera texture which is basically the camera pointing at our scene and capturing everything, and then we have our device which is just our object that is basically capturing the information from. In this case though, we're going to actually delete the device because we don't want that. We're actually going to use the null objects we've created as the scene objects for our controllers. What this is basically going to mean is whatever is plugged into the scene object here, so in this case my null objects, either right or left, that only that information will be fed into, this, into the render pass and then output onto our device. So if I was to drag my right side null object into my patch editor like so and then hook this up to my scene object. You'll notice that it sort of goes black and doesn't quite look the way we kind of expect it to. You'd expect it's only going to show that element um, and by all means it kind of is but it's lost all the colour data and it's kind of just the raw shape essentially. That's because there's a few more little bits and bobs we're going to need to do before this will kind of work so please bear with you won't see the final result until we've gone through this entire pipeline so if you get into staging it and worried don't be we're not quite at the final point quite yet it's going to take a little bit more work okay so i'm just going to unlink my scene render pass from my device like so and now we should have this no signal thing being displayed i'm going to drag from my scene render pass into my patch editor and I'm going to add a mix patch and hook these two up. And then I'm going to drag my right texture and hook the A, which is the alpha value, up to the mix A alpha value on our mix patch, like so.
And if I was to hook this up now, you would notice that we have half of our screen on show. We still don't have the color data being fed in. And again, we'll fix that later. But we do now have a kind of where you can sort of see how our scene is now split down the middle, which is kind of how we want it to be. Um, I'm just going to go to my two materials here and just set them both to be flat, like so. And you'll notice that now I've set them to flat, the color data has returned. Now the reason for this is it can't take in our dynamic lighting. So if we're using a standard shade type, our lighting data is lost. To enable to fix that, we would need to actually attach our light object to the null object in our scene. So if that's why it was appearing black is because we had the shader type set to standard or physically based. You do need to add light to the null object for this to work um, if you are doing this technique. But it's no good us just having this one side. It kind of doesn't actually achieve the result we want at all. So I'm going to select my scene render pass and hit Command C, Command V to basically duplicate it. I'm going to hook my camera texture up to my background on this duplicate scene render pass. And now I'm going to drag my left side object into my patch editor and hook that up to be my scene object on this second render pass. Like so. Again, I'm going to drag from my render second render pass and add a second mix. Hook this up like we did before. And then I'm going to drag my left texture into my patch editor, hook the A or the alpha value up to my mix. And now you'll notice if I just to hook this up to my device like so, it now swaps and shows us the other side. So we've got the blue square, but now we can't see our other side, our right hand side, or in this case actually the left, because again, I'm basically the reason I've called them right and left is because and which is actually the opposite to where they've been displayed, is because I'm basically calling them that as the occluded side, not the side that's being shown, if that makes sense. So my right side is the side that's being masked, and my left side's been shown, and vice versa. If you want to flip those names around with your own project, feel free to do so if that makes more sense. Uh, I do it this way just because it makes sense to the kind of other workflows I go through. So if I want to add these two together and show them both at the same time, I'm just going to use um, add an add patch. And I'm going to hook these two mixes up to this add patch and then hook my add patch up to the screen output like so. And now what you'll find is we have, if I was to move from one side to another, we have our kind of rectangle or our two different planes being shown on our right and left hand side with the two scene render passes being captured and then stuck together and then outputted to our display, essentially. And like I said, this could be a diagonal cut, this could be a top and bottom cut. It doesn't really matter too much. I can still edit the things within these null objects. So let's say I didn't want this to be in line. I could have this uh, rectangle be lower. I could still animate these elements. So now if I go over here, it's, this is in this position. If I go over here, it's in this position. If I go in the middle, they're both on show. Any animated textures I had would still be displayed. I could keep adding things to this null object. So I could, let's say, add, let's add a face mesh and have this face mesh on our face tracker object, like so. And just give this the blue material. And we'll just move our plane forwards a little bit. And out of the way just a little bit. So, so you can see we can still st keep add things. Uh, if I wanted the material to keep the light data, like you said, it's all flat at the moment, I'm just going to add a light to my scene. So I'm just going to add, in this case, a directional light, I think. Position this so it's look facing my scene. Select the object I want to have the material controlled by. So I'm going in this case it's material one. I want this to be a standard material. And now because I've added that light to that um, null object, it's now influencing the shader. However, you'll notice that on the other side, now this has gone black. So I need to 
just duplicate that light and add that light to my other side as well. Just to keep the consistency between one side and another, um, because if we're basically introducing a standard shader type, we need to make sure that we had a light that's influencing that shader for it to be displayed correctly. Now you may notice that in my other filter I had a line down the middle, that could also be an animate element, and all I did for that was I imported a simple, uh, I basically made a square, and it made, drew a straight line down the middle of that square, transparency on both sides, and I'm just going to import that into my project. So this is another texture, and basically where I need to add this texture in is I need to add this into my pipeline. I'm looking at my phone because I have basically uh, made this early and I want to make sure that I uh, don't forget a step as I'm redoing this. So where this add is, I can just drag from that, click mix like so, drag my line into my patch editor, hook the, uh, the um, RGBA up to the second input on our mix, and then hook the alpha up to our alpha on the mix and then hook that up to our, our screen output and now our line is added and like I said that could be an animated element it could be an animated uh, texture sequence that we drag into here and hook up the thing just to remember is basically everything eventually has to hook into our screen output so you need to add mix subtract etc how you want things to kind of combine together we can still add elements to one side and not the other so on this side I can still add let's say canvas and on this canvas I'm going to add a rectangle and I'm going to make this rectangle fill the width and height of my sit project now in here you can see it fills the entire screen but on my display here it's only showing half of it obviously I can create a material select this material and just give this a kind of a tint so I could color grade things you'll notice again the same thing to remember again with how materials and objects went align with each other layer wise but you can basically you can sort of see where I'm coming from you can start to build up this uh, effect and like I said it doesn't have to be left or right like so it all depends on how you create your texture and how you split it up and basically white is what you're keeping and what is transparent is being um, kind of occluded essentially. So I kind of hope that this makes sense. Um, this is my way of doing a split screen effect. It's not necessarily the best way. There might be a better way. It might be an all optical way. Um, I will say that this is, can get a little bit system heavy. So try and not have things be uh, too complex and remember with Instagram you do have a size limit so sometimes simple is best. So I hope to see you all in 2021 where we'll be looking at doing some more crazy stuff. Hopefully you have already subscribed to the channel if not please hit that bottom, button down below and the bell icon. It does help my channel greatly. We are so close, so close to getting 10 to 10,000 subscribers at the point of making this video. So for everybody who's basically supported my channel in 2020, thank you very much and I will see you all very soon. Goodbye.